Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be the first video in uh, a couple or maybe a few videos about the CNC machine. So I've been telling you guys that we've been having some problems with this CNC machine. So what I'm going to do is take the camera off the tripod and I will walk around and show you the old components and the new components and I'll give you a comparison uh, between the two and I'll even toss in a few examples of some cuts that we've made that I consider uh, not acceptable and uh, you'll see right away um, just how bad they are and why it was necessary to make these changes to this machine. Alright, so let's get started. All right, so this is an example of one of the older components. This is the old rail system. Now, this system consists of uh, one uh, long uh, hardened steel rail that goes the length of the um, 8020 extrusion. And it's got a, uh, a ball screw that's inside. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try and zoom in. You can see the ball screw that's in the center of this 8020, and it's covered up by this, um, I don't know what this is, but uh, it just helps protect the uh, ball screw from, from dust and particles. Let me zoom back out. All right, so this these steel rails are held in by these clamps. Now, these are called, these are what's called VCON clamps, and there's four of them that span the length of this 8020. Uh, there's four on this side and then there's four on the bottom side. Now, this steel rail, if I were to take it off, uh, it would not be perfectly straight. So what they did was, in order to keep it, uh, not only to keep it clamped to the 8020, but they tried to keep it straight with these really small VCON clamps. Now, let me show you why that's bad. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not necessarily bad that uh, they have the clamps, uh, because there's really no other way to keep this uh, piece of steel on here. But it's bad in that there's only four of them, and they're really small. And let me show you why that is. So, let me get a roller here, and I'll, I'll explain how this works. Okay, so this is a... Uh, v-grooved roller, one of them that I took off. Now this roller rides along this uh, knife edge on top. And <clears throat> it follows this edge along the length. So what happens when you have a bend in this in this rail? Well, the roller is going to follow that bend. Now, in order to keep it straight, like I said, it's held in with these VCON clamps, but what happens if there's a bend, let's say, here, which is between the two VCON clamps? Well, there's really not, not much you can do about that. Um, now, you wouldn't think that there'd be much of a bend here, but uh, you'd actually be wrong. These are made from, uh, I think, aluminum. Now, while you can keep them straight, in this uh, in this channel within this aluminum uh, VCON clamp, you can't keep it straight here. My thought was, well, if we made longer VCON clamps, let's say twice the length of this, or maybe uh, three times the length, it would actually keep this rail uh, pretty straight, and we wouldn't have much of a problem. The problem is that uh, they don't make VCON clamps like this that are very long, at least not from the place that I was getting my parts. Uh, so, what happens when you have a, a, a bend here? Like I said, there's not much you can do about it. Or you have the, the, the bend uh, right here, or here, or here, or here. You see what I'm getting at. There's, there's really not much to, to keep the rail straight in between these clamps. So, I was dealing with uh, tiny bends um, in between these in between these clamps, and there's four spaces. Or yeah, there's four. There's a space here, a space here, one here, and one at the very end that uh, gets 
I, it gets slotted into this end bracket and there's even a problem with this and I'll go over that in a second but the bottom line is that if these rails weren't straight to begin with they're not going to be held in straight with just these tiny v-con clamps it's just not going to work out um, so I was and and the issue is you've got one rail here one rail so, so you've got you know twice the chance of not being straight just on one side and then there's you know the side over there there's that side to worry about and then there's the y-axis to worry about so I was dealing with uh, you know six rails that I had to get absolutely perfectly straight and I had to take clamps to try and bend this steel in between here and then I had to move these um, V-con clamps either in or out uh, to try and keep it straight and believe me this was not easy um, once you make a, an adjustment here then you have to adjust it down here again and then you have to adjust it here and it's an ongoing process and it was really driving me crazy uh, I, I just could not take it anymore because I just couldn't get it to a point where it was perfectly straight and I was still ending up with parts that uh, just weren't within the tolerances that I would consider acceptable. So, uh, let me show you this, uh, let's see, get the cord out of the way. Let me show you this end bracket. So this end bracket is held in with these uh, standoffs, one here, uh, one up here, and then there's one in the back that you can hardly see, it's right, right there. Okay, so, these rails are fitted into a slot on this end bracket. Well, if this end bracket doesn't line up perfect, if this slot does not line up perfect with the rail system along here, then what's going to happen is this rail at the very end will be bent in a certain direction, either this way, you know, any direction that this, that this clamp is, or this bracket is off. So there's that to deal with, and you know the the rollers go beyond this V-con clamp. They go way in the back here. So if this is bent back here, then you know it, what's the point? So uh, and there's two of them to worry about, and there's the rail down here. So you know you've got twice the the problems. And as you can see, I've already got uh, spacers in here that I had to adjust. I've got some uh, brass uh, shim stock. Uh, in the bottom here, I've got even a nail uh, to keep it uh, tight within the the, uh, the groove because it would not adjust correctly. I had to come up with a a little system there. But anyway, there's there's three of these you know end clamps to worry about. So you know it, it was an ongoing problem. It's just compounded by a, a bunch of different things, and uh, it, it just. I couldn't deal with it anymore, so I, I just had to change the system. There was no way that I could continue uh, working like this. So, what I've done is I've purchased linear uh, slide rails. And, uh, alright, let me just pan down and I'll show you what these really look like. What these consist of is a, uh, a one, it's a long, straight, round shaft. That is that has a a pillow block on the bottom. It's attached to this aluminum um, rail block, and this shaft has a a little block that, as you can see, it slides along the shaft. And these have let me take this off. These have little bearings inside. Uh, they're little roller bearings, and it's a really cool system because it even has a little bit of plastic or I don't know what this little bit of rubber on the outside that sweeps the rail and it keeps it clean of debris which is really cool and that helps to keep the uh, the roller bearings uh, nice and clean but anyway this is a really cool system so I came up with a way to attach the uh, the gantry bracket, this huge piece of aluminum, to these rails. 
And these long uh, shaft rails are very, very straight. Uh, there's hardly any variance in, in these uh, shaft rails. So I switched over, we're going to switch over our system, the entire system, to these uh, shaft rail systems. And uh, I've already got, you know, most of the brackets already made that fit. And I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I've got, uh, it's just going to attach to the, the big piece, this big piece right here. It's just going to attach just like that. And it will slide just like this. But it'll be attached to this. This big uh, metal plate is attached to the, uh, it's attached to the ball screw inside and it has a, a, a plate on the back and it's got some pins here that keep it uh, in line with it. So the ball screw attaches to this plate and then this plate attaches to the rail and that's how it moves. So uh, I've got another one over there that I'm currently working on that is the A-axis. So there you go. That's the system that we're, we're currently installing. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have some parts still left to, uh, to come in. Uh, I have two more of those, um, two more of these, uh, shafts that are on their way. They haven't shown up yet, but, uh, they'll be here anytime. So, once we've get, once we've installed these, um, shafts onto these, uh, axes, uh, we'll go ahead and reinstall the whole thing. And uh, we'll we'll see how well it works. I don't know why, you know, they chose to go this way. Maybe it was a cost issue. Uh, I I have no idea. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourself, well, why didn't you just get new uh, or, or more V-con clamps to put in between the V-con clamps that go here and here? I mean, you could just take another V-con clamp and put it in between, and it would be it would take up the space and then you could take care of the bend that goes in between. Well, yes and no. Um, we thought about that and let me show you how these V-con clamps actually work. If you take a look underneath, you can see that there are pins that are stuck underneath. These are locating pins and these locating pins fit in, in this little channel right here. Now they don't fit in there tight they fit in there rather loosely, so you can move them back and forth within the channel just like this, okay? So why is that important? Well, I have to adjust these, uh, I was having to adjust these V-con clamps uh, left and right, like this, in order to get it straight. And I had to do it on this one, and I had to do it on this one, and the one on the end, and one down here. And I had to do that all over on the bottom. And then on over there, same thing. So why didn't I just put more in between? Well, that would mean that I would have to adjust it that many more times down the rail. Um, this, you see, the problem is that even if you were to put it uh, in between, there would still be a small gap here. So there's still a space in between this channel right here and the next channel on this VCon clamp. So the only real solution is to make one long VCon clamp that has one long channel. That way there's no space for this rail to to go wacky, to, to go, you know, to be not straight. So, you know, more V-con clamps was just not the solution. The solution is to go uh, a different way. Let me go over here to the milling machine and I'll put a couple parts on the table and I'll give you a couple of, ex of examples of uh, some, some, some parts that uh, were just not acceptable. This, flat, this surface right here is very flat. Okay, this is a milling machine uh, table. Now, this is probably, I'd say it's flat within um, half a thousandth um, on the entire surface, across the entire surface. So, for the purposes of this demonstration, this is a flat table, all right? So, as you can see, there's a little, you can see the gap here on the very end, 
All right. Now it's not much, but I would say that's probably about uh, five to ten thousandths of an inch. All right. Now I'm holding it down flat on one end, and as you you can probably tell, I'm rocking it back and forth, and you can see the gap disappear. Okay. Now this is probably one of the worst ones, one of the worst cuts that I've had. And they were like this not only on these pedal arms, but it was like this on the side plates as well. Um, so we couldn't have this. This is unacceptable to me. Um, you might be thinking, man, that's, that's, that's not much at all, but it is. When you, when you're trying to line up parts, putting them together for assembly, uh, that's pretty bad. Also, uh, these holes, if you, if you put two, if you put one side, uh, pedal arm against the other, like if you say one of these, put it together, what was happening was the holes weren't lining up. Okay, I don't know if you can see that on camera. This, you know, there, I'm doing this on purpose just to give you, uh, an example of what was happening. Um, on some of the side plates and some of the pedal arms. Uh, you cut one on one area of the uh, router table and then you cut one on the, on the opposite end and the two holes, you know, they're the exact same parts but the holes wouldn't line up. So that's what we're running into. We're running into problems just like this and you can't have that. So what, go, what happens when you go try to assemble these two parts? Well, <laughs> You know, the holes aren't going to line up, so you're going to end up with, uh, you know, it's just, it's bad. So that just shows you what we're dealing with. Um, so we decided to uh, make these changes to the CNC machine. There's just no other way around it. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for uh, for this video. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a series of videos on this uh, this installation. I will probably do some some short clips of uh, some of the work that needs to be done in order to install it. And I'll probably top it off with the complete installation and some testing. Alright guys, we'll see you next time.